Hello, everybody. This is Tom Eckert here. You're listening to my podcast, Numerology, a GPS for the soul. This is your place to learn about the true power of numerology and how to use it to bring out the best in yourself, understand your loved ones better, take wise decisions, and prepare for your future. In other words, how to live your life aligned with your true destiny. Take your time to educate yourself and share these podcasts with your friends and family so they too can enjoy the great benefits of numerology. Enjoy! Hello to you, my beloved listeners. And today I'm recording yet another really lovely episode. I'm actually very excited to talk about the topic of today. It's deep and I think uh, some of you would really relate to it. Uh, it'll be about the karmic debt, 16-7. But before that, I just want to say that if you are new here to this podcast, then I want you to know that we discuss here the path and the science of numerology as a path for inner transformation, for inner growth, for self-understanding. It's a place to really make numerology more accessible and to bring a high-quality education of numerology. And I want to make numerology accessible and applicable for everyday life matters. Now, if you haven't gotten a numerology reading before and you want to try one, then you are free to contact me through my website link. Um, if you want to study numerology in a more methodical, self-paced way, then I suggest you check out my self-study course. And if you dream to become a professional numerologist, perhaps, you can study one-on-one -on -one with me. And all the info is, in, uh, my web is on my website. The link is provided in the description of the episode. So just go ahead and check that out. Now, one last thing before we jump right into our episode for today. There's a secret episode among my podcast episodes. It's a little game I like to play, and this episode holds a coupon exclusive only to you, my podcast listeners, and it gives you a 65% off discount for my online numerology course. So just go ahead, check out my podcast, listen to them, and find out where that coupon is. Okay, having said that, let us, uh, without further ado, go into today's episode. So karmic debts, um, karmic debts are a unique and a challenging journey. Uh, we're not going to go like too deep into what karmic debts are, but like, like, let's say, uh, in a few words, karmic debts are a, a kind of unfinished business from previous lifetimes, a lesson that we really need to balance. And it comes as a form of un some uncomfortable experiences in this lifetime. That's really, really, really kind of like shortly put. Now, they can appear as a core number in your core chart, in your core calculations, but they can also appear as a long-term period, such as a pinnacle or a cycle, but they can also appear as a personal year, a short-term cycle. Now, in this episode, we will learn and focus on the lessons of a 16-7 and what does it feel like to have a 16-7 as a life path and as a personal year. These are the two things I chose to focus on in this episode. Now, I want to kind of make a note here and say that karmic debts in general are challenging, but are not bad. So let's just take good and bad out of the equation. They are lessons that need to be lived, understood, mastered, and eventually to become a gift a gift to yourself, a gift to the world. And uh, that includes all the karmic debts. Now, since the focus of this episode is the karmic debt aspect and not the general seven life path, I'll naturally focus more on the challenges of the 16-7. But don't you worry, we will also talk about how the gift of the 16-7 looks like once the lesson is learned and hacked. So just be patient as you listen 
And don't be discouraged by hearing all those challenges because I'm sure that if you have a 16-7 life path or if you're going through a 16-7 personal year, it can sound like a lot to take in. But as I say, just be patient because we just have to hear, first of all, the shadows, right? So we'll start from the shadow and then we will move into the light and reveal the gifts, the powers, and the beautiful flowering of the 16-7. So let us start by talking about the 16-7 as a life path. Now, like all sevens, the 16-7 karmic dead life paths are also meant to walk their own path and follow their own truth, like all sevens are supposed to do. However, the difference here is that they will tend to do it in ways that are often too sharp too cutting, and very often in ways that are insensitive to others that cross their path. And the whole topic of the 16-7 in general is, is, is about like somehow ruining relationships and, 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 and matters of the heart, okay? Now, at their core, as a life path again, right? The 16 sevens feel awkward. They feel inherently flawed and as if something is deeply, deeply wrong about them. Whether they really say it or not, that's a different matter because you will, you will soon talk about it, but they really don't like to show their vulnerabilities, right? But they do, they do. They feel deeply flawed, wrong. They feel unwelcome in a deep way. They feel like outsiders and sometimes even a bit like aliens, Okay, so now sometimes as a result, they're going to create like a whole like ego image of being very special, of course, right? Because if you feel like an outsider or an alien, then somehow you need to cope and you're going to make yourself like you're going to you're going to develop an image of someone who's very special and above everyone else and so on and so forth. Again, a topic of the 16 seven. Now, they are very afraid of criticism, and they're very afraid of abandonment. Now, as a result, they will often be themselves extra critical, cutting in the reactions, emotionally hurtful to others, shutting doors in people's faces, abandoning friends and relationships. They, they're going to have these very quick reactions sometimes, as if they know everything immediately. So they, somebody says something you don't like, boom, shutting a door in their face, turning around, going away, insulted, you know, and, and kind of like in a sharp, cutting, painful way. You will often see that they simply never allow criticism. It's like they don't let you tell them uh, that something is not working or that something has been too much. They will feel immediately like because deep deep, deep down inside, they feel so inadequate and so wrong and awkward. It's like they, they, they cannot receive the criticism. They're going to block it. Okay? Now, at times, 16 sevens will choose to live alone, like lonely wolves. And very often, they will experience uh, issues and troubles in relationships. So, the, the, you, you see, they're, they're actually very strong types in, in many ways. The 16-7 life path is a very, is a highly spiritual number. There's a deep spiritual power there. But unless they kind of like hack and master the lesson of the 16-7, and we'll talk about that a little later, they can really tend to simply ruin friendships, ruin relationships time and time again. And that's what sometimes will make them lonely wolves. But sometimes it will simply also be a choice, simply a choice to, you know, be alone. Because when they're alone, they don't have to deal with emotions, criticism, the danger of maybe someone leaving them, right? And so on. Now, they are really afraid to expose their vulnerability. And when I say vulnerability, I really mean their emotional vulnerability. So emotions is like a big topic here. And it's already kind of a hint, okay, uh, to what's going to be the solution. 
So they are afraid to expose their vulnerability and they hold up a strong facade. Um, and their facade is very often really arrogant. So the 16 sevens are super arrogant um, and they often make others feel uncomfortable and, you know, less than them, right? They look at you from above um, and they can even make you feel awkward. So yeah, that, that's a bit that, that kind of like arrogant ego trip of the 16 seven. And, and soon, of course, I'm going to say something about the whole purpose um, when we're going to get to the gifts I'm also going to explain to you like the lessons, like what, what is meant to be learned here. Okay. So just bear with me again. Don't feel um, uh, demotivated or deflated by hearing all of this. Uh, we're simply building up towards the, the, the light. So now throughout their life, uh, 16, seven life paths will often experience both being abandoned by others Sometimes, you know, friends, sometimes a close friend will suddenly turn their back, disappear. Someone they were really close to will suddenly disappear or people will suddenly take a distance from them without really explaining why. Like they will, it, they, there's going to be this kind of mysterious feeling of like, what the heck just happened? Like, what did I do? What did they, what did, what did I do wrong? Right? It, it kind of sends them back into that place of what did I do wrong? What happened here? I don't understand. Right, so suddenly, sudden abandonment without any explanations. And again, it makes them feel, you know, deeply inadequate, deeply wrong. It really kind of throws them into that place. But they also do the same to others. And that's also the interesting and a bit, yeah, how should I say, ironic thing, right? So they're very afraid of it, but they also do it to others. But here, here, here's another point. You see, sometimes due to their immense fear of abandonment, and I've seen that happen really in, 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 in some people that I know, they will behave less like a seven and more like a six. So it's like they will, they're going to be so afraid to experience abandonment that they will turn into a six. And a six is all about holding on to family, holding on to friends, nostalgia, basically relationships, right? Everything just not to experience abandonment, just not to experience that pain that they're so afraid of. So, of course, this is a compromise of their inner truth, but this is something that sometimes happen, happens. Now, often life will also hit them hard just to teach them humbleness and humility, which they so desperately need to learn. So all of this is pretty much kind of, of course, there are many more dimensions to this, but this pretty much sums up quite a large chunk of the experience of the 16-7 life path. Now I want us to move to uh, the 16-7 karmic debt personal year. So first of all, when we talk about it as a personal year, it's important to understand that it isn't as strong as a life path. A life path is something that's the deepest lesson in your entire lifetime. A 16-7 year can, 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 um, you know, can cross the path of any person. That has nothing to do with the 16-7 in their chart, but it can come as a year, as a personal numerological year. So it's not as strong as a life path, but it can be for that time period a very deep, very sharp, challenging, and even important lesson that will leave an important impact for the future. So let's get into the lessons and the experience of the 16-7 personal year. So first and foremost, just like a seven, but in a bit more uh, extreme or emphasized way, it's a year of more solitude and somehow it feels more heavy and at times even sad, like without any apparent reason. It's just like 
a strange big gray cloud is suddenly hovering above you and is filling your your kind of like internal space so it can feel more heavy it can feel more sad almost like a sense of a loss but like without really being able to point at what was lost right so it kind of it's a withdrawal it pulls you in it's a time to reflect the 167 personal year is a really a time to reflect and especially take inventory of our lives to look at our you know to look at our lives and 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 see whether we're in the right place whether we're truly walking our path whether we're happy with what we're doing so this can be challenging because the 167 is a penetrating energy and it brings up very deep very fundamental topics to be reviewed you know it's like what's my purpose right so it's like I, it could have been that until that point until the 16 seven year you've been working you've been doing you've been feeling happy with what you do and suddenly comes this lightning energy the 16 seven it kind of like enters your system and suddenly you feel like as if something very fundamental has been undermined all of a sudden you feel like what's my purpose like deep questions suddenly that were clear a moment ago become unclear am i happy with where i am am i happy with my life right i might have family kids i might have gone through a certain in a certain path of career i might have been i don't know on a certain path in general and now i suddenly feel like everything is put like in like in a question mark why am I doing what I'm doing? So first of all, all these fundamental topics can come up in a 16, 7 personal year. It can kind of really bring you to kind of uh, steer you up a bit and, and, and make you reflect. Reflect and sometimes you will need support in doing that. And that's perfectly fine. And that's great. Now, topics like death can come up. Grief, loss, goodbyes can sometimes come up. And it doesn't necessarily mean it can be also a real external event. Like, for example, a goodbye from someone that was really, really close to you, an ending of a relationship that was really important to you. This can also sometimes be a death of a, of a, close, a close one, a relative or a friend or whatever, literally saying goodbyes. So it's like those topics of, of fundamental topics, right? Life and death. So dealing also with those topics of goodbyes that the, the 16 seven is so afraid of, as you remember, right? They don't want to be abandoned. They don't want to say goodbye to something. And grief, grief in the sense of, again, and this will lead us soon to the, to the gift, right? They need to feel, they need to learn to feel the emotions, right? So that's important. It will come up in the 16 seven personal year. So this year will sometimes feel as if it takes away from you the sense of what you just a short while ago felt really connected to. Um, it's as if, okay, it's as if everything comes down crashing. It can feel like that. And by the way, you can take a look at the... At the um, at the tower card of the major arcana, the number uh, 16, it's like the um, falling tower, I think, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And it really, really resonates with that card because it's really something comes crashing down, but it's in order to kind of like cleanse you of something that is of identities and all kinds of like facades and masks and behaviors that are not relevant anymore to give birth to something on a much deeper level. So although it comes crashing, it feels like everything comes crashing down. Don't you worry. Because eventually it is meant to be rebuilt on a deeper, much more spiritual foundation. The process can be a little tough, but as I said, it holds a beautiful gift in the end. And talking about gift, I think we're ready after we really presented pretty much in detail, you know, the, um, the, the, the challenges and the experience of the 16-7 as a life path and a personal year, 
to delve and dive into the lesson and the gift of the 167. So in the end, or eventually, the 167 is meant to humble us, to free us from our fat egos. And one of the greatest solutions, greatest hacks of the 167 karma is to come completely out of the closet with your true emotions and not be afraid to feel and come down from your arrogant throne, right? So if you know yourself as a 167 life path or one of your real core calculations, core numbers such as expression number or soul urge, this is also relevant for you. But also for someone who has a personal year, it's important, even if it's not your major path in life, this is a year that invites that kind of like softening of your being, opening up some of the dams that you've been putting on your heart and didn't want to kind of really reveal. So it's really about opening the heart and being willing to truly be fully out there especially on the emotional level. Do not hide your darkness. Do not be ashamed of your darkness. Do not hide negative emotions. Don't be afraid to feel the pain sometimes. Don't be afraid to cry. Don't be afraid to show people what's really happening inside of you. That's really the key. That's the code to really crack the lesson of the 167. Then, once that happens, a miracle occurs. The 167 becomes an incredible presence of love and wisdom, united, so exposed, so vulnerable, so inspiring and spiritually powerful. Because the 167 is spiritually powerful, but they cannot share their full power until they release that arrogance, until they release that facade, until they come down from their very arrogant position, until they open their heart and free their emotions. And don't care anymore what people think about them. Really let it flow. Then their spiritual power shines immensely. So they must let go of their arrogance and facade and be willing to to be seen all the way. As a personal year, if you let the reflection that you're invited to go into break you open, even if it hurts, You will be humbled, but feel deeply freed as a result. So this year eventually will make you lighter and much more connected to yourself and your path. So it's important with a 16-7, both as a life path and as a personal year, to be patient. To be patient and do the right thing. Challenge yourself. Step down from that arrogant position. Let yourself be humbled. That's anyhow the place you feel most happy in. Now, as an example, maybe some of you know, maybe some of you don't, but I really, really love the beautiful, beloved spiritual teacher who passed away a couple of years ago, Ramdas. He was a wonderful, wonderful spiritual teacher, so beloved, such an immense, beautiful heart energy, so devotional. There was his whole energy field was devotional, and that's what he really kind of elicited from people. And so I was so curious about him that I had to check his chart, and I was like, sure, I'm going to see nines and sixes and whatever, you know, his numbers. And I was shocked to discover that he had two 16 sevens in his core chart, which means it only comes to show what happens when somebody manages 
to crack their heart open and hack and solve that lesson and calling of the 167 karmic debt. So he cracked it open and he became this emanation of surrender, of true love, of true sincerity and openness and devotion. You could feel so much love around him. And he was also so deeply loved by others. So that just comes to show us the potential of the 16-7. So just remember that although the right isn't always easy, the purpose is good. And if you work towards it, you will reap the rewards and become a beautiful role model of the gifts and powers of the 167. So I hope this inspires you and, and pushes you to really reflect again on your path. Now, I've started to um, post some questions uh, in my podcast episodes, and I would really love to hear more about your experience with numerology. And those questions that I'm posting are visible for the time being only if you listen on Spotify. And I'd really love to read your answers because I want to learn more about you, my beloved listeners, uh, to, to again, to give you, to know who you are, to know where you're coming from, and to know your experience with the numbers, with numerology, how it affects you. And this will also help me um, create episodes that really answer your needs more and more. So go ahead and share your answers. I'm super curious. And just to remind you, if you wish to get a numerology reading, uh, there's the link to my website. Contact me. Feel free. If you want to study numerology in a more methodical, self-paced way, check out my self-study course. Um, if you want to study in-depth numerology, become a professional numerologist, then check the one-on-one -on -one studies with me. The link is in the description of the episode. And remember, there's the secret episode podcast, uh, podcast episode um, that gives you this uh, exclusive coupon with a 65% off discount for the self-study course. So just search for it, check it, and enjoy it. Okay, my friends, that's all for today, and I will see you in the next episodes. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, and you want to go deeper into numerology, check out my website, tom-eckert.com. You can also book a numerology reading or even study numerology yourself through my courses. I'll see you in the next episode.